Hello everyone, this is Brett and thank you for tuning in. Today is Vinyl Tag 2024. This is a thread that started by Rob Walker. He's been doing it over the last couple of years. Uh, I did one back in 2023. Um, he uh, presents 20 questions and you make a video uh, answering those questions and it's quite fascinating to see various people spread across the vinyl community uh, pulling and showing records from their collection talking about their you know history of record collecting and uh, their love of music and uh, always really cool so thanks Rob for doing this I'll leave a link to Rob's channel in the description so you can check out those questions and if you'd like to participate feel free to uh, film the video so um, here we go so 20 questions first one is the favorite record you purchased in 2023 um, I did a video uh, last week showing my uh, 10 best albums of 2023, but this is spread across over anything you purchased, whether it was old or new. This isn't technically one that I purchased because my wife uh, got it for me for uh, my birthday, and that is the soundtrack to Bloodsport, one of my favorite movies starring Jean-Claude Van Damme. I think it came out back in 1988. Uh, this is the waxwork, double vinyl. Look at the beautiful color and the labels on this one. Blood sport. Um, the last record you bought in 2023, my sister and and um, and, and nephews uh, visited for uh, Christmas from Chicago, and um, m one of my nephews just got into record collecting. So of course for me that's super exciting. So uh, I took them to three different record stores here in Phoenix, and uh, and I found some gems myself. But the very last thing that I bought was uh, I was happy to find this. This is the Primitives, Lazy, 86 to 88. Looks like I paid $15 for it. Uh, this is a compilation of the Primitives, like early singles collected, as mentioned, from 86 to 88. It looks, it came out back in uh, 1989 on the band's own record label. If you're unfamiliar with the Primitives, they're kind of like an alternative pop band from the UK. Uh, Tracy Tracy's the singer. Uh, probably known best for that song Crash that they did and if you think you that sounds unfamiliar if you if you bring that up and listen to it you may recognize that one so that was the last record bought in 2023 the uh, the primitives question number three a band or singer who released two or more albums in the same year this was like an automatic just immediately thought of this and this is kind of like a twofer here because I could consider this like the same artist released four albums in the same year because he was involved with um, with all four of these. And that's David Bowie. 1977, he released the low album, iconic album cover as well. Same year brought us Heroes. But not only did he release those under his own name, but he also produced and co-wrote two albums from Iggy Pop in 1977. And these are like all-time favorite albums of mine right here. Iggy Pop's The Idiot. And then also, Lust for Life. So how about that? David Bowie, Iggy Pop, 1977. Four albums there. Next up, if you could only listen to music from one decade, which would you choose? I mean, this was a, just another knee-jerk reaction. Easy. The 1980s. Um, I'm just going to show a little snippet of things in here. But with The Cure, Disintegration from 1989. Here's Bauhaus, Burning from the Inside, 1983. The sound from the lion's mouth, underrated post-punk band, phenomenal. Depeche Mode, Black Celebration from 1986. U2's The Joshua Tree, 1987. R.E.M. Murmur, I could show records all day on, on the 1980s. All right, next up, show a record by a band or singer from Manchester. Uh, Rob Walker is in Manchester, England. This is another one. Manchester is one of the greatest cities of all time for music. So this was, I could have probably just pointed my finger with my eyes closed and pulled something from Manchester. Uh, but I chose to go kind of more obscure on this one. Factory Records, Swamp Children, and uh, they were a Manchester band, turned into a group called Kalima. It's kind of... You know, when we think of factory records, we think of bands like, you know, Joy Division and, and New Order or to really call them that kind of stuff. This is kind of more Latin jazz. Excellent. If you can track down a copy of this, um, it's interesting, too, because the cover looks like Arizona, but it is definitely a Manchester band. So this is Swamp Children. 
Okay, next up, which band or singer did you listen to the most in 2023? So for the, those of you that watch my channel, um, for those maybe unfamiliar, I uh, often do a lot of album rankings from different artists. And um, this year I did several with my friends uh, Greg and Frank. One of them that we did was The Smashing Pumpkins. And we uh, ranked all of the albums in their catalog as well as we did an additional supplemental video uh, with our 25, I think it was 25 best non-album tracks. So that was a huge, Billy Corgan is one of the most prolific songwriters. So in order to prepare for that video, I had to re-familiarize myself with the entire Smashing Pumpkins canon. So there was so much listening going on. So if you're interested in those Smashing Pumpkins video, do check out my channel for those. So this is their debut 1991's Gish. Okay, question number seven. Show seven seven inch records i couldn't just show seven i had to pick eight this first one's interesting uh there was a record so back in like i don't know early 2000s there was a, a record store here that had a whole box of these and it's one of my favorite bands of all time and this is joy division and this is a flexi single uh for the song coma kino with incubation and there was a record store here in phoenix that had an entire box of it back then and judging by the price tag, I paid $5 for it back in 2001. And uh, I, I think on Discogs it listed that there were 75,000 of these pressed. But there was like, I don't know, a box of like 500 of them sitting in this store in Phoenix back in 2001. Uh, and my friend and Jesse and I would always go in there and be like, wow, there's that Joy Division box again. Um, so this came out back on April 18th of 1980. And uh, really cool. Joy Division. Uh, next up, one of my absolute favorite songs from The Church. This is Metropolis, backed with Much Too Much from the Gold Afternoon Fix album. Uh, here's uh, from an Irish band, Whipping Boy, back in 1995 from their second album, Heartworm, When We Were Young. That song is absolutely incredible if you don't know it. Next up, we'll go to Nico Saita, backed with Vegas. Vegas is such a great track. Letters to Cleo, here and now. I remember getting this at a record store in San Diego for $1.99. Remember that track? I think it was around 1993. Here and now. And she sings really fast. All right. Peter Cetera, Glory of Love from Karate Kid 2. Stacy Q, Two of Hearts. I remember when I was a kid. I think this was yeah, 1986. Great track. And let's close it off here on the 7 inches with this. Um, rare Jane's Addiction 7 inch that is um, the kind of the rare track Slow Divers, a live version of that, backed with a cover of Led Zeppelin's Whole Lot of Love. So there is, there are eight 7 inch records. Question number eight Who's coming to your party? Choose four music related people to come to an imaginary dinner party, past or present. Who would you invite? One of my, not only one of my favorite film directors, but composers as well, John Carpenter. My party's gonna be pretty sophisticated here. Frank Sinatra, I grew up with Frank Sinatra, my dad's all-time favorite um, singer. Only the Lonely, great album. Ah, uh, the late Carolyn Crowley from Shelley and Orphan. If you're unfamiliar with Shelley and Orphan, do check them out. And then, Nick Cave. This is uh, 1992's Henry's Dream with one of the greatest Nick Cave songs straight to you on this one. Okay, next up, we lost them. Choose one musician who passed away in 2023. There was many of those, but the one that, uh, the videos that I did watch, no one has mentioned um, this person yet. Ron Pino from the Australian band Died Pretty. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with Died Pretty, um, 80s alternative rock, really hard to describe. Somewhere between a cross of like the Velvet Underground, Stooges, with um, I don't know REM, like all kinds of all kinds of references in there. But Ron Pino, really charismatic, great singer, great front uh, front person. So this was their debut, Free Dirt, Lost, Every Brilliant Eye, but a great catalog of work. And and um, uh, sadly we lost him in 2023. But uh, I cannot not mention Sinead O'Connor, too, an all-time favorite here. Okay, let me grab the next stack here. I don't know if Rob's offering to fly out to everyone's house and help put records away. <laughs> but, but that's going to be uh, this afternoon's chore here. 
So next up, imagine that you could only listen to music from one country. Which country would you choose? You know, while there's great music from 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 all countries, all parts of the world, um, automatically it was uh, it was an easy one, and that's England. Let's just show some records. How about Love and Rockets? This is Earth, Sun, and Moon from 1987. The Cult, Sonic Temple from 1989. That iconic cover with Billy Duffy. Uh, all time top five album of all time for me. This is James uh, with Laid from 1993. Suede, their debut from 1993. And I could go on and on showing uh, bands from the U uh, from, from England. So, England it is. Uh, name three vinyl community channels you discovered in 2023. This was hard to remember when I discovered things. Um, but I just want to mention, I'm going to mention five people because I don't remember when two of them that I, I feel like it was like maybe last year or 2022. Maybe it was early, like maybe it was through the vinyl tag of 2023. Um, but Retro Musings, and I'm going to link, leave links for the descriptions. Uh, she does great videos. I love her passion and how she talks about music and record collecting. Um, then there's Vinyl Reckoning. Uh, it's a couple, I think they're in North Carolina and they go out to record stores and they do really well edited videos. It's really funny. Uh, I think Matt and Stacy are their names. So if you don't know Vinyl Reckoning and what's interesting about them is usually I don't have much common ground with music and records that they showed, but I really love hearing them talk about music and how excited they are about what they find. Um, and I love their banter between each other. Um, and then thirdly, um, Embryonic Robot, Brian up in Canada. We have a lot of uh, common ground on music as well. Uh, he has an amazing collection. And then I want to just shout out two other people because I don't remember when I when I first discovered Mike PC31, the Vinyl Policeman over in England. Uh, he does great videos as well. And um, Mike over at Play Vinyl in the Milky Night. Sorry, Mike, if I got that wrong. But Mike's a great guy. Uh, and shows a lot of cool stuff and we have a lot of common ground too in, uh, in, in what we like. So I'll leave links to all five of them just so you can check them out if you're ready, if you're not subscribed to them, but please do subscribe to them. Okay, show a record you bought when you were a teenager. I picked two. This is one uh, came out in 1986. I was uh, just a teenager that year. And this is a 45 for the Bangles, Walk Like an Egyptian. Um, yeah, that's my original one right there. And secondly, I grew up in Chicago, and this was such an important record when I was in, uh, I don't know, seventh grade. The Chicago Bears, the Super Bowl Shuffle. I mean, this was just, I mean, Walter Payton, William Perry, Mike Singletary, Jim McMahon, Gary Fensick, Willie Galt. Uh, that year was so exciting, 1985 going into 1986 when the Bears won the Super Bowl. It was just uh, such an amazing time, and uh, this the, the Monday after they won the Super Bowl, we all stayed home from school. It was a big celebration. But I remember also being in our auditorium um, in, in junior high where I grew up and uh, performing the Super Bowl shuffle with some of my classmates. So, oh man, so good. Okay, next up, show a funk or soul record. Charles Bradley, Victim of Love. Uh, Charles Bradley, when I first heard his first album, uh, This World is Going Up in Flames, and I heard that back and I think when it came out, maybe it was 2012, I think. And I was like, what is this song I'm hearing from the 1960s that I've never heard before? And come to find out, it was brand new. Charles Br Bradley had got discovered when he was in his early 60s. He put out a few albums and then sadly died, but I got to meet him. Um, when he did a record store signing at Zia Records in Phoenix and uh, he signed the first album and then this one had just come out to Brett with Love Always from Charles Bradley. He was such a nice guy and, and getting, you know, thanked me from the bottom of his heart from being there. And there was a handful of people there and it was, it was so great. Uh, so Charles Bradley, this is his second album, Victim of Love. All right, next up, show a record that you think everyone has and then show a record you think nobody has. So, you know, lots of immediate ones came to mind as far as like common albums that, you know, everyone has. So I went with Prince's uh, Purple Rain, classic. I mean, the song Purple Rain itself is just one of the greatest songs of all time. And then let's say what 
Al, what record do I think nobody has? Now, I'm sure someone has this across the world, but I'm going to go with Heino here. So uh, Heim, Heino, uh, one of the greatest selling German uh, singers of all time, um, he released so many albums. I think he sold like excess of 50 million uh, copies. So who else has some Heino in their collection? I'd be curious. All right, next up, She's Great, a record by a female artist you bought in uh, 2023. So in my best albums of 2023, I showed uh, this artist's second album, which I think was my number two favorite album of the year. Um, but I wanted to show uh, her debut, which I also got uh, this year as well. And this is Morgan Wade. This is her first album, Reckless. And this is the deluxe edition, which includes a uh, bonus record that has a bunch of extra, um, extra songs on it. The opening track, Wilder Days, is one of the best songs I've heard in the last 10 years. So if you're unfamiliar with Morgan Wade, kind of alt country, I, I described her as a cross between like a, a Casey Musgraves and a Bruce Springsteen in my last video, but definitely seek out Morgan Wade. That is her debut, Reckless. All right, next up. Uh, the favorite, okay, the favorite video you posted on your channel in 2023 and then uh, the favorite video you watched in the VC in 2023. Um, the, the one that immediately came to mind was the one I did with Frank, Greg, um, and my friend Peter Ulrich, who is the original drummer in uh, Dead Can Dance. And we talked about his book, we talked about his, uh, his history in the band, Dead Can Dance, and, and then we ranked uh, the whole catalog, all the albums of the band. So that was definitely my favorite one. Um, and this is his book, uh, Drumming with Dead Can Dance and Parallel Adventures. Highly, highly recommend. Uh, for musical biographies, it's just such a, a, a positive uh, experience detailing his life, his experience uh, with the band, and also the, uh, that he, he continues to write about them even when he's, he wasn't playing with them anymore. So really fascinating read. Um, Peter Ulrich, Drumming with Dead Can Dance and Parallel Adventures. And uh, yeah, so that was my favorite. And then um, favorite videos you watched in the VC in, in 2023. I'm gonna just mention two here. Um, Brandon, Mr. Hall of Fame, who's been around the vinyl community since, you know, I don't know, 2008 or something when, when it was just a few people uh, making videos talking about records. And um, for those of you that know Mr. Hall of Fame, you know his uh, his uh, uh, his music room is just like a record store. And so when um, so I love first off, his videos are great because um, he shows everything like he loves. He's incredibly passionate about music. He talks about anything. He's not afraid to show, you know, whatever the pop music all the way through jazz and metal and all kinds of stuff. He's into everything and it's great to hear him talk about it. Um, so uh, he did his, uh, I think, annual or biannual room tour in 2023. So you can check out his new setup and it's always just fascinating because he's got records, CDs, uh, cassettes, all these homemade box sets and it's and just really cool. So that and also I want to mention Craig over at Craig's Vinyl Plethora. Um, who did a response video to a video that I made um, sh uh, that I titled One Record for Every Year of My Life, where I ran down in backwards order as I hit a milestone birthday this year and showed a record from 2023 all the way back to the year that I was born. And Craig was uh, one of the few that did a response to that. And I think we're the same age. So it was cool to see him show a record from the exact uh, same years. So definitely check Craig out as well. Um, I will leave a link to him, so uh, very cool. Okay, show me a record you describe as a 90s classic. There was many of those, but I wanted to show this one. This band doesn't get talked enough, enough about. This is Concrete Blonde, their third album. Bloodletting, this came out back in high school. The uh, MTV song that was on every afternoon after I'd come home from high school was Joey, fronted by Jeanette Napolitano. Um, James, James Mankey had um, one of the greatest guitar tones, just this crystalline sound. Uh, Paul Thompson on drums, but uh, as far as other songs on this one, Bloodletting, the vampire song, which is the opening track. Caroline, which is beautiful. Darkening of the light. 
Uh, my absolute favorite song in this one is Lullaby, and then it closes out with Tomorrow Wendy, but beautiful, beautiful stuff. And Peter Buck from um, R.E.M. plays uh, Mandolin on Darkening of the Light. So 90s classic right at the beginning of the decade, Concrete Blonde with uh, Bloodletting. Okay, question number 18. If I could walk into the cover, look through your collection and choose a record cover you'd like to be a part of. This was a little bit of a challenging one, but then all of a sudden last night, it just came to me. I'm gonna show two because I just feel like they're kind of connected. I'm gonna go with King Diamond's Abigail from uh, 1987 with this uh, these horses and you got the guys riding it that are their heads are down. And then I'm gonna show it the next album, Them, with this cool haunted house, just like imagine riding to that house. And I just wanna explore those grounds there. So anyways, just beautiful, I love the colors. King Diamond, excellent stuff. But these album covers, yeah. All right, next up, question number 19. It's like a greatest hits. Show a record you're so familiar with that it feels like a greatest hits. Let's take it back to Manchester for you, Rob. The Smiths, The Queen is Dead, one of my favorite albums of all time. Um, the Queen is Dead, the opening track with the thunderous drum intro. Frankly, Mr. Shankly, which has that little kind of almost like bouncy romp to it. I know it's over, which is this, this heart-wrenching dirge. Never had no one ever. Cemetery Gates, this acoustic little poppy thing referencing Keats, Yates, Oscar Wilde. Big Mouth Strikes again, absolutely stellar. The Boy with the Thorn in His Side. Vicar in a Tutu, I mean, uh, There is a Light That Never Goes Out is just epic and then closes out with Some Girls Are Bigger Than Others. It's not a greatest hits album, but it feels like a greatest hits album. 1986, The Smiths, The Queen Is Dead. Finally, closing out at number 20, Show Me an album that was released in 1974. Immediately the one that came to mind was David Bowie's Diamond Dogs. Uh, my favorite David Bowie album, but I watched PC31, The Vinyl Policeman's video, and he showed that one, so I had to be different here. And another great band of the same era, Roxy Music, Country Life, their fourth album. Um, I wanted to show this one also because I think the cover is ridiculous. So uh, you remember the two women that were on the cover of this? Well, this is like the censored cover, so they're just not in it. So it's just this kind of bush on the cover, which is kind of uh, just struck me as, as a funny when I found this in a record store. Um, and this is almost like a greatest hits. You got the thrill of it all. I mean, how about All I Want Is You, Out of the Blue, If It Takes All Night, Bittersweet, Triptych, Casanova, A Really Good Time. It closes out with Prairie Rose. I skipped a few songs in there, but that came out in 1974, the fourth album from Roxy Music, Country Life. And I love how it says the fourth Roxy Music album. So anyways, there you have it. That is Vinyl Tag 2024. Be sure to check out those links in the description. And once again, as always, if you're new to the channel, please hit like, leave a comment, and uh, think about subscribing. I will be back soon. Thank you for watching.